return with us to um, the book of uh, St. John. We were going over uh, St. John last week, uh, talking about encounters. And uh, we said earlier that oftentimes uh, some encounters, uh, especially encounters that are godly, can be life changing. It can change your direction. It can, it can help you move in another direction that can benefit your life forever. And that's what uh, the woman at the well, when Jesus encountered her, it changed the trajectory of her life forever. Uh, as you know her history, she, uh, she uh, was a, 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 a harlot, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, she was uh, one that uh, liked, I don't say liked, but did sleep around. And uh, she encountered Jesus, and Jesus was, uh, helped her to, to change her life, to, to be saved, to be set free, to be delivered. And as is already stated, the, the Samaritan woman and uh, the Samaritans and the Jews uh, did not get along. But Jesus said in the earlier chapter of this particular book, that he must needs go through Samaria. And that word must, he must needs go through Samaria. So he, he needed to go there to meet up with this uh, young lady and um, uh, extend to her the gospel so that she could be saved. And we know that uh, when she encountered Jesus, she saw him as a Jewish man and she said that no, uh, the Jews don't have any dealings with the Samaritans. So there was a lot of hatred in, in between the two groups because the Samaritans uh, were not full-blooded Jews. And they themselves uh, uh, never, they didn't follow the, the Mosaic law. They weren't into following uh, the divine word of God. So they made themselves uh, their own religion. They uh, worship, uh, as we want to get into the lesson, they worship uh, in, in a whole other mountain, uh, and, and they serve God in a different way uh, that wasn't according to God's divine plan. So they were rejected. And uh, the beauty of that is, is that uh, the Lord, uh, from his holy church, rejects no one. You know, everybody is included in the body of Christ, the gospel. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth, it's a whosoever believeth opportunity uh, in him, they shall be saved. So as we um, look to get into our lesson then, Jesus encountered her, and in the encounter, uh, he was drawing her in. When we witness to people, uh, we should witness to people to help to draw them in, uh, into salvation. And um, so I want to uh, begin our, our lesson uh, from where we uh, left off, a good space from where we left off. Um, um, let's, let's uh, ask my reader, uh, Crosby, if you would read for me, please. Um, St. John, chapter number 4, and uh, verse 33. Therefore said the disciples one to another. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm too far down. Uh, 27. Uh, 27, thank you. <laughs> and upon this came his disciples. Uh -huh. And marveled that he talked with the woman. Yeah. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Uh -huh. Or Be what? Oh, go, oh. Uh, uh, read that verse 27 again. I'm sorry. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? So the reason why his, that, that question came up is because. 
uh, the woman was a woman of reputation. And uh, Jesus being a Jewish uh, individual, they didn't really mingle with people with this type of reputation. And uh, so therefore, uh, uh, someone of Jesus' caliber would not have been talking to a ranked sinner. But we see that, that, that with Christ, things are different. Amen? He came to save the lost. He came to save those that, 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 that needed healing. He didn't come to save those that were already healed, but he came to save those that needed healing and deliverance. All right, read. The woman then left her water pot uh -huh. and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man. So the woman, after her encounter with Jesus, uh, Jesus had asked her uh, a question and um, uh, about giving him some water. And the lady said, you know, you being a Jew asks me to give you some water. Jesus said, if you knew who I was, uh, you would ask me to give you that living water. Uh, and what Jesus was referring to was salvation. He was referring to deliverance. And, uh, and you know that whole discourse happened after that. And uh, Jesus, the woman said in the end, Give me that water. I want that water so that I don't have to thirst anymore. And then Jesus said to her, well, go, uh, go get your husband. Huh? And she said, I don't have a husband. Huh? And, and the Lord said, you told the truth. You had five and the one you went now isn't your own. You know? And the woman said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Uh, and, and Jesus then begins to engage her a little bit more. And, uh, and, and, and like I said, she asked him that question about, about where should uh, uh, we worship? And Jesus said, uh, you know, uh, see, uh, <laughs> my mind, my mind. I like to give people the whole story. <laughs> Let us move up. Let us move up to verse 13. I'm sorry. Let us move up. Jesus answered and said unto her, uh -huh. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Read. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Yeah. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. All right. Jesus was, he's, his goal and his purpose is to help people to gain everlasting life. All right. Read. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water. Yes. That I thirst not, mm. neither come hither to draw. Yes. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Mm -hmm. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now hast is not thy husband. Yeah. In that saidest thou truly. All right. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, she's getting a closer revelation of really who Jesus is. At first she saw him as a Jewish man. Now she's seeing him as a prophet. All right, read. Our fathers worship in this mountain. Mm -hmm. And he say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now, here she's changing the subject. You know, when, when, when people get convicted, <laughs> they like to change the subject. Uh, but, but Jesus, he stayed with the subject. When you're witnessing the people about Christ, and you're hitting home with them, and they're starting to get convicted, uh, they're going to try to change the subject. But, but stay, with the, stay with the subject. Uh, and that's what Jesus did. All right, read. 21. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto her, Woman, Woman, believe me, yes. the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. All right, so she asked Jesus about where to worship. He said, Believe me, uh, uh, neither at this mountain or uh, in Jerusalem uh, 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 nor yet at Jerusalem 
worship the Father. So he was telling her that uh, the place is not important. Uh, it's not important. It's the condition of one's heart uh, that's important. Uh, amen? So read, what's it say? Ye worship me, know not what. Uh, now he's saying that you worship, but you don't you don't know what you're worshiping because your your worship, he's not being rude, but he's letting them know, and what she has to confirm that they were into a man-made religion. They were into a religion, the, the Samaritans, that was connected to the Assyrians, because the Assyrians took them over. Uh, and they assimilated into the nation that uh, was, was over them, and they worshiped their gods. Uh, uh, so they, they didn't worship the true and living God. All right, read, Jesus said. We know what we worship, <laughs> huh? for salvation is of the Jews. Now, Jesus is being arrogant when he's saying that. He's saying that God is the author of salvation. Uh, and he, his divine character and who he is declares what's holy and what's not holy. And God himself gives an order of how he is to be worshipped. Uh, and the Jews received that divine order because they were God's chosen people that God used as a holy nation as an example of how to worship him. Amen. He didn't choose them because they were such a great nation, uh, but God chose them because he decided to set his affection upon them and his love upon them, and he drew them in. That's how he does with us. Uh, God didn't choose you uh, because you were so great, but God chose you because he decided uh, to set his affection upon you, to set his love upon you, and to draw you in. Amen? Aren't you glad about it? Hallelujah. Jesus said that himself. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right, read. 23. Uh-huh. But the hour cometh, and now is, yeah. when the true worshippers shall worship the Father uh -huh. in spirit and in truth. Yeah. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now, Jesus said, uh, for the hour cometh, and that hour that is to come is uh, he, he has called all men and women to repent, uh, to turn their hearts back to him. Uh, John the Baptist, when he came on the scene, his message was, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus, after he got baptized uh, in, 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 in the river Jordan and went to uh, 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 the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, Amen. Y'all remember that, right? Amen. And when he came out of the wilderness, and after he overcome, came those temptations of the devil, his message was, repent ye, uh, uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it, it is time for people to repent and turn their hearts back to God. Am I right? Amen. So that's what he meant when he said, the hour of what verse you here? Verse 23, the hour coming and now is when the true worshiper. Yeah. Uh, see, there's some false worshipers out there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, and the false worshipers are the ones that don't acknowledge God, that don't acknowledge the baptism in Jesus' name, that don't acknowledge the infilling or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that don't acknowledge that you have to live holy and live and walk with God to keep his commandments. Amen? But there are, there are true worshipers. That's what he's looking for. True worshipers, those that will, 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 will take heed uh, to themselves and to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Those that will live holy, submit themselves to the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. And, and worship him the way he desires. Uh, you can't give God what you desire. You have to give God what he desires. Why? Because God is sovereign. Am I right? Um, and, he, and he's described the way in which we ought to worship him. All right? Read that again. Verse 23. Yeah. Uh -huh. When 
the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, now, now how, how, what does God require? That we worship Him in spirit. Uh, and being in spirit means to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Uh, because the Spirit itself, when you really, really have the Spirit and begin to pray and to begin to seek God, it's the Spirit that make an intercession uh, for you and I. Amen? Hallelujah. And we are, we are, are described as worshipers of God. Amen. Worshippers of God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have to start directing people to come this way. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So we see you then. And, and, and you must worship God according to the Spirit, and you must worship Him according to the truth. What is true? Thy word is true. Amen. And, and Jesus said Himself, I am the way the truth and the life. Uh, so Jesus left us a record uh, because he is the living word himself, the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us on how we ought to worship God. Amen? So, so we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Notice, I love this. For the Father seeketh such. Uh, he's looking for, for people to worship him this way. It's his desire. Am I right? Hallelujah. To worship him in spirit and in truth. And Jesus did, in verse 24, he gives the reason. Uh, read. St. John 4, 24. Yeah. God is a spirit. Uh huh. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, those that want to connect with God, uh, because God is a spirit, have to uh, be spiritual. Am I right? Hallelujah. And you can't connect with God with a carnal mind. Uh, you have to have a spiritual mind. And last week after I, uh, I really delved into this point and taught it, uh, the Holy Ghost dealt with me. And he said, you know, you should have went over uh, into Romans chapter <coughs> number 8 uh, and, said, and, and taught about the carnal mind. Uh, is, is enmity against God. Uh, uh, and, and it can't please God. Am I right? Hallelujah. So that's why God wants your mind to be renewed. Be not cut on, but be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your what? Mind. That you may do what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and what? Perfect, Perfect will of God. You can't serve God with, with, with your old mind, you've got to serve God with a new mind. Am I right? Uh, to see things God's way. Hallelujah. Let this mind, what? Be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So, so therefore, he's saying uh, uh, God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. In order to uh, receive revelation from God, you have to be spiritual. Uh, uh, a lot of people miss out on revelation from God if they're not spiritually minded. Uh, God speaks to you when you are spiritual minded. The scripture says if you draw nigh to God, he'll do what? Draw nigh to you. God, 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 he, he's speaking all the time. But only those that are spiritually uh, uh, able to discern will receive of what God is saying. Am I right? Hallelujah. Alright? So he says, uh, God is a spirit and, and they that worship him, amen, must. <laughs> it's, not, it's not an option. You've got to uh, worship God in spirit through the anointing, through the Holy Ghost, uh, and in truth. You have to abide in the truth. Am I right? Uh, uh, you got to live it. Uh, you you got to live this thing. I got to get excited. You got to live this thing. Uh, God is and He's seeking something. Uh, he doesn't want to withhold any good thing from you. Uh, uh, when you're spiritual, you can receive the spiritual things of God because then you're able to discern it. A carnal minded person won't be able to accept uh, or receive the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. That's it. Hallelujah. Thank 
know that God's ways are not what? Our ways. Our ways. Am I right? His thoughts are what? Not our, not our thoughts. Hallelujah. So if I'm trying to understand God, I need to have the mind of Christ. Am I right? Hallelujah. I got it. I got it. Because God can tell you to go stand on the corner and wait there and I'll bless you. Uh, you may say that doesn't make sense. Uh, but God ain't about making sense. God is about obedience. Yeah. Uh, um, and when you serve God and walk in obedience, God will bless you. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> because we can't reason God. Uh, we can't rationalize God. Uh, am I right? Uh, let's go in just real quick to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And, and, and verse uh, number one. Hallelujah. Uh, now faith is. Now we're talking about faith. Now faith is. The substance of things hoped for. Uh huh. The evidence of things not seen. All right. God operates by faith, doesn't he? God is a God of faith, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, faith. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Yes. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, you would be able to understand that uh, if you weren't spiritual minded. Because basically God's saying that, that I created uh, uh, <laughs> I created, I created nothing out, out of my word. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a God of, of, of nothing. Uh, and I can make nothing come into existence. Yeah. Uh, 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 you follow what I'm saying? That's how, that's how awesome our God is. And, and, and if you don't have faith to believe it, uh, you would say, how can those things be? Hallelujah. <laughs> but, but by faith, we understand. Uh, that when God speaks something, uh, it can be made manifest uh, uh, because he's, he's that kind of God. Uh, hallelujah. He's that kind of God. Am I right? Uh, free. What's it say? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, uh -huh. by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Yeah. God testifying of his gift. And by it, he being dead, yet speaking. Mm -hmm. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That he did what? You just get on this? Come on through. Just that he pleased God. Uh, that he did what? Yes. That he pleased God. I read. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now notice. Uh, without it, it's impossible uh, to do what? Please God. Please God. Now, a person that isn't spiritual won't be able to understand that. Uh, won't be able to comprehend that. Uh, but a spiritual individual comprehends it, and not only that, but they live by it. Uh, they live by it. Why? Because they understand it. But, and the next verse will tell you why. What does it say? For he that cometh to God uh -huh. must believe that he is. All right, now that's why I got to operate in a spiritual mind by faith. Because when I come to God, I've got to believe. I can't see God. Uh, but I, but, I, but I, can, I can feel God. That's right. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can talk to God.
and we ought to be seeking him. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, God is seeking us, and we ought to be seeking him. Amen? You know, let me say this. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Thank you, Lord. That, 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 uh, uh, when I say some of us, and I'm hoping that all of us in here, realize that we can't live without God. Uh, uh, can't, can't move without Him. Uh, I understand that in Him we live. Uh, I understand that in Him we live. Uh, and I understand that in Him we have our being. Uh, and, and because we know this, uh, we treat God a whole other way. Uh, we reverence God. Uh, Uh, he, he, didn't, he 
So, so 
somebody and they don't take the bait right away. Give them some time. Don't call them a blue-eyed demon <laughs> and walk away. Huh? Give them some time. Am I right? Encourage them. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus did. He waited. Huh? Hallelujah. Then when he got her on the hook, he revealed who he was. And you know, to be honest, this is the first time in the scriptures Jesus is actually revealing himself to somebody. Yeah. Uh, it was time for her to know. Am I right? Yeah. The Jews uh, uh, and Pharisees and the Sadducees, it wasn't time for them to know. But it was time for her to know. Uh, it's your time. For you to know him. Am I right? Hallelujah. All right, read. 27. Uh huh. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yeah. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? Because Jesus of his reputation shouldn't have been talking to a woman, as they said, of her reputation. Uh, but the gospel, it, it fits all. Amen. Uh, the gospel, he came, he said, I came to save them that are, that are lost. Uh, I didn't come to call the righteous. Uh, I come to call the unrighteous. All right? All right, read. The woman then left her water pot. Uh, no, notice her reaction. She left her stuff behind. <laughs> uh, when, when you go walk with Jesus, you got to leave some stuff behind. Uh, leave that old thing behind. Uh, leave that old thing behind. Leave that old way of thinking behind. Am I right? Uh, man, pick up your cross and what? Follow him. Just follow Jesus. Uh, her life was changed. She forgot what type of woman she was. Amen. We ought to forget what type of person we used to be and become the person. God wants us to be. And the reason why I'm saying that like that is, is because the devil, he wants to always remind you of who you were. Not who you are and what you are becoming. He wants to keep you in your past. Doesn't he? Uh, you, you know, they didn't trust you out. You know what you need to go get your gun. You know, you know what kind of person you used to be. Uh, be humble. Uh, humble. Uh, turn the other cheek. Well, you know we don't do that. You know that I would never talk to you. Uh, I heard, I heard, hey! I heard this, uh, this woman say one time, when the devil <laughs> tries to remind me of what I used to be, I remind him of his future. Right. Absolutely. But I always remember, used to be, don't make no more money. You used to, used to be, don't make no more honey, he said. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Thank you. And we've got to, we've got to. You used to be. Okay. Okay. You, what you used to be ain't gonna make no more honey. Uh, uh, okay, B, spell B, E, E, S. Okay. <laughs> okay, y'all talk about that later. Uh, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> All right, read. The woman then left her water pot. Uh, I the, look, the woman left her, he left, she left a uh, uh, water pot. And went her way into the city uh -huh. and said to the men. All right, now she became an evangelist. The first change. Amen? Christ changed her. When, she, when did she change? When she caught the revelation of the Messiah. Uh, who Christ is. When do you change? When you catch the revelation of who Christ is. Am I right? Hallelujah. Notice the scripture. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But that as many as what? Received 
received him. To them gave he what? Power to become uh, the sons of God. That's what she became. Uh, the sons of God. Go ahead. She first had to repent. Yes. For which she was. <laughs> yes. We have to repent. Yes. For what we do. Yes. And that's when God can work with you. Yes. When you repent, when you give up. Give up. Surrender your way. Surrender. And let him have his way. Yes. And she let Jesus have his way. Yes. Yes. And that is so true. If you think back even over your own life, when Christ entered in, uh, call back the former day. Uh, when you surrendered to him, uh, uh, you should never forget that day. Uh, hallelujah. That chain. That's a great chain. Am I right? Uh, hallelujah. I was going to say also, it was a long period of time that they had seen a prophet. It was like four or five hundred years. And even Jesus used the prophetic uh, way of speaking to people. And he told Nathaniel, I saw you when you was under the fig tree. It was a way of catching people's attention when he was able to prophesy and mm -hmm. tell people about their, uh, tell people about themselves. Yes, I, I, I partially agree with you about the, 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 the 400 years before they had even seen a problem. The reason why I say that is, is because, uh, remember when, when, when John the Baptist died, Jesus did his eulogy, and he said, uh, uh, call him John the Baptist, prophet. He called him the great prophet. He was the last Old Testament But I certainly understand what you're saying because there was a came at the same time. Yes, <laughs> yes, and there was a, a, a period of silence where we had 400 years of silence where God uh, didn't speak to them until John the Baptist came on the scene as the voice crying out in the wilderness. Um, this is good, eh? John, o, John the Baptist was the last Old Testament prophet. Somebody would ask you that question. You tell them that. Uh, John the Baptist was the forerunner. Yes. Of Christ. The forerunner of Christ. Yes. Uh, this is good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Where we at? 49. Uh huh. Come to your man. Uh huh. Which told me all things that ever I did. All right. Now, now, now notice. Notice. She didn't say, come see me. Uh, when, we, when we witness to the people, we don't, we don't tell about, uh, 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 spend a half hour talking about us and uh, two or three minutes talking about Jesus. Uh, should be the opposite. Spend a minute talking about you and then use 29 minutes talking about Jesus. <laughs> Am I right? Because why? He's the one that's going to say it. She said, come see you there. And you know, what I like about this is she was so compelling and so convincing that they had to come see me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen? Yeah. Um, be, be, be compelling. I ain't saying force folk to come. Don't beat them over the head to come. Uh, but but compelling. Come on. 
compelled. Amen? Compelled to come. And they came. Don't look at your whole life and allow that to hinder you from witnessing to others. She didn't allow that to hinder her. Amen? Don't, don't act a different way. <laughs> uh, when you're around people, uh, and, 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 and don't proclaim him. Yeah. What did Christ say? If you be ashamed of me, I'll be what? Ashamed of you. She wasn't ashamed. Amen? Uh, I read. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Now Jesus is now using this as a teaching moment. Amen? He's using this as a teaching moment. Christ uses your daily experiences as teaching moments if you're spiritual, if you're listening. Follow me? He's always speaking. We have to listen. Am I right? Even when you come and pray, don't take up the whole conversation. <laughs> you follow? Y'all know what I mean by that. Uh, don't, don't you say all the words. You, you open the door and then wait for the still small boy. Uh, meditate on him. Let him deal with your heart about what you just asked. Let him speak. Am I right? Uh, read. What verse she? 33. Uh, Therefore said the disciples one to another, Has any man brought him aught to eat? Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him. Oh, said, read, read that. Read that one when you come up. 33? Yes. Yeah. Therefore said. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 32. Yes, read. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. All right, so Jesus did, as I was saying, he's now using this as a teaching moment uh, to, to, to deal with his disciples because they were still prejudiced. They believed that salvation was only of the Jews. Case in point, Peter had to be chained when he had that vision, when he was getting ready to be sent to Cornelius' house. Uh, they had a whole, <laughs> they had literally a whole council meeting uh, because some Gentiles got saved. <laughs> they called a whole council uh, uh, because some Gentiles got the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Uh, got saved. Uh, they had a whole meeting uh, because some Gentiles got saved, got the Holy Ghost, uh, bigger and better about whether or not they should be baptized. Yeah. Uh, whole meeting. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know how big your stuff. Uh, uh, God wants to save some folks, uh, and we say, "Ah, oh, oh, they can't be saved. That ain't funny. That's for us. People that look like us." Uh, 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 well, uh, we we ought to expand our mind. Uh, am I right? Paul Paul was approached, and they said to Paul, you know, uh, why? Basically, in a nutshell, why are you dealing with them? They ain't even preaching what we preach. Uh, and Paul said, let them alone. Uh, if Christ is preached. Uh, they let the preacher. Huh? Huh? We got we got to learn how to do that. Am I right? Hallelujah. Oh, we ain't the only ones going to be saved. Uh, that's a narrow. That's a that's an ineffective God. If we the only ones saved. Uh, you know some people believe that in their church. We the only church saved. No. Huh? No. Uh, that's a small God. What do you say, Big Bill? They deceive. They deceive. Yes, they are. <laughs> Woo! Deceive. You mean to tell me God made all these nationalities of people? Uh, and he's only going to deal with us few? Right. No. 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 There was a church that believed that 144,000 were the only people who were going to be saved. Yeah, there's a church that believed that. An organization called that believes that. Uh, I know. And you know, 
Israelites, like as if they're just something totally different. Oh, oh we're the Hebrew Israelites. We don't do that. And when you hear their, their message, they use the word of God to like contradict what white people did. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's white people that enslaved us. See, 400 years ago, or we're, we have a black Jesus, or, you know, it, it's just crazy. It's yeah. just like, crazy. he's not even looking for stuff like that. He no. wants a true relationship. No, exactly. You're looking for things to look at. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Oh, His God. word is true. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead. The Bible says it will be a number that can't be numbered. Can't be numbered. It's going to be like the sand of the sea. Yeah. Can't be numbered. Can't be numbered. And you know, uh, to be honest with you, Revelations talk about that number can't be numbered. Talk about the tribulation saints. You know, I used to think in my mind, oh man, the Lord going to save all of them, the tribulation saints. You know, and I have to come to the clue that in my fitness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, I want to be part of that number. No, no. And if they give it God's fitness, he can do what he wants. That's right. Uh, and, and I was reading the book of Judges one day, and uh, that was the first time I read through it. It was years ago. And uh, when I first got saved, and I was reading how they would fall into sin. God raised up a deliverer and bring them out. They would live holy. They would fall into sin. God raised up a deliverer and bring it out. And I said, God, you gotta kill them. <laughs> God, 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 me. Just hit me my food. I'm not all by myself. It revealed something in my heart. Uh, you can't judge it. Jonah didn't want the Ninevites being saved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all, y'all, y'all was definitely saying, you know, we can't, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be open. Because yes. God is open. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Salvation and deliverance never change. God, God just uses different strategies uh, to bring people into his kingdom. But the message never change. The focus never changes. Alright? Uh, I was going to say you also have to be able to have the discerning spirit. He got a shot. Because Jesus, he discerned what kind of movement that was. That's why he said, go, 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 go get your husband. Right. <laughs> right. Like, he discerned her. Right. He said, go get your husband. Right. Because he, because she needed to convict him before she could get saved. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And when you're witnessing the people, get have that discernment. You know, have, uh, uh, have you, they want, they want Christ. Ask them, have you committed any sin that you need to repent of? You know, and then they say, no, I haven't committed any sin. Right. Tell them to continue them out. Have you lied? Have you stole? Have you committed adultery? Have you had any other God before? Did you take his name in vain? <laughs> uh, and if they say yes to one of those ten, you sin. You're guilty. You need to repent. Uh, if they accept Christ as a sin. Pardon me? I said if they have not accepted Christ as a sin. Wow. Okay, I gotta think about that. Am I right? Hallelujah. Oh, and you know, he's the master of that. 
is because he's the creator of all things. Uh, and, in, in, and he's in all things. Uh, uh, I never forget. Uh, I, was in, I was in the spirit. Uh, and I was walking down the street. And everything I saw, the tree, the house, the bird, was, was I, I could, the Lord was dealing with my mind about all, how all of that is spiritually connected. Yeah. Huh? Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. Uh, everything. The wind. Everything. Yeah. Huh? Now, now it relates to the word of God. Huh? Your food. Natural food, spiritual food. Natural drink, spiritual drink. Am I right? Natural house, spiritual house. <laughs> oh, everything, your clothes, being dressed, clothed with the spirit. Uh, am I right? Hallelujah. Oh, everything. So, 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 read. 34 again. Uh-huh. Jesus said. Oh, 35. Pardon? Oh, yes, 34. Read. Jesus said unto them. My need is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now that should be your need as well. And need does what for your body? Strength. It nourishes you. It sustains you. Your need or your desire should be to do, do the will of God which will nourish you. Uh, it will sustain you. Am I right? Huh? Not my will, but what? Thy will be done. Am I right? Hallelujah. Uh, and your meat or your sustaining force and power should be to do his will. Am I right? My hand, your will. My feet, your will. My mouth, your will. I should never seek to do my will. If I sought to do my will, it'll get me in trouble. That's what got us in trouble. We're doing what we want to do. Uh, you got to get rid of that song that says, this is your thing. <laughs> uh, you can do what you want to do. And nobody can tell you. Y'all know that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God can tell you. Huh? He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. He wrote your book. Yes. He declared your end. Yes. Am I right? We know the end before you get there. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Man, I'm enjoying this Bible study. Thank you. All right, read. Say ye, say not ye. Uh huh. There are yet four months, mm -hmm. and then come the harvest. Yes. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. All right. So he said, he said, he said, say ye not that there are four months, and then come the harvest. You know, he's taking uh, uh, reaping and sowing and making a parable out of it. Right? They, they, they planted in, in June, uh, and then in October, September, they reap the harvest, right? He said, don't say that when it comes down to souls, soul winning. Fun? Read. What did he say? And he that reapeth receiveth wages. Uh, read that 35 again. Say not ye that there are yet four months, and then come the harvest. Uh-huh. Behold. I say unto you. Now he says, Behold, means take notice. I say unto you. Lift up your eyes uh -huh. and look on the field. Yes. For they are white already to harvest. He said, Now is the time huh? to witness. Now is the time to invite people to salvation. That's his will for us. You know, the blessings are friends' benefits. But God's greatest desire for us is to tell somebody about him. Did you feel? Do we all agree with that? Yes. All right, did you feel? 
and, and I think that's what happened. His, his disciples, his disciples got hungry and they went into town to buy some meat. <laughs> they left the world. And, and, they came, and they came back, you know, come on, Jesus, eat. Yeah. And, 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 who did you witness to? That was yeah. the guy just talking. She went and brought the whole town back. What did you do? <laughs> I like that. I wish I was in that. I like that. Yeah. They left the work. Uh, they left. Uh, Jesus was working. Uh, bringing souls in. And they left. Uh, and then when they brought back the meat, Jesus decided to, to, to give them a lesson. Uh, thank you. It's time for us to be about our Father's business. Amen. As soon as he gives us the Holy Ghost, he expects us to be witnesses. That's his will. That's his desire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, bring somebody. Invite, invite somebody to church. Right. It doesn't matter if they don't come. Right. Uh, fulfill your job. Yeah. Fulfill yeah. your obligation. Yeah. Uh, it's up to them. Yeah. But sometimes they won't come until we ask. Right. Am I right? Uh, and, and you know, I'm going to be honest, like me, he invited me. Uh, Brother David Riley, and it was a year later. Huh? And it was God that brought it to my remembrance. Hmm? Hallelujah. All right, man. Bishop. Huh? I was, gonna, I was thinking on this wise the invitation, the, in, the invitation or the, the invite or whatever you want to say, it's like an entry. Yes. Into the word of God. You know, you like you said you came a year later, but no doubt with it all in that time you was thinking you was dwelling on something yes. that Brother David had said to you. Absolutely. It was sort of like a, he had opened a way. So yes. you know where to come to or what to do in just in case or at that time when you needed when you needed it. Absolutely. I don't know how many nights I used to lay in my bed and say Man, this guy who lived next door to me, he don't have any problems. And I got all these troubles. You know, and, and you know, I knew he probably, uh, looking back on it, I knew he probably had some problems, but he had the problems I had. <laughs> you know, I was going to heal all that problem. I said, man, I'm going to be like him. <laughs> you follow me? Yeah. Uh, you had problems, but he had help. Yes. And I, and I felt you, you, you needed that help. Yes. Yeah. And I desire that. <laughs> Go ahead. A lot of times we have to come to that point where you want to give up. Yes. Uh, he was thinking about it and things <laughs> wouldn't get no better for you. Wouldn't get no better. And that was the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Huh? Bring you to that point. Yes. When God got his hand on you, and that's, that's saved or unsaved. Uh, and you try to step out of the will of God, it won't work. Because God has his hand on you. Huh? Oh, it's good stuff here. Thank you. So we might as well submit and surrender to him. Amen? Oh, All right, read. Uh-huh. He that reapeth receiveth wages. Uh, now look. So read that. You know, hit this real quick. And he that reapeth receiveth wages. Uh -huh. And gathereth fruit unto life eternal. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth, reapeth may rejoice together. So those that are operating in the kingdom of God. Helping people to get saved. We can rejoice together. Co Amen. Co-laborers with Christ. Am I right? And and uh, if you're not used to inviting people to church, uh, start out doing it, and it'll become easier. Huh? It'll be a part of your conversation. Am I right? Invite people. Sheep beget sheep. Am I right? People watch your life. <laughs> You're a light. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, brother Bob. Amen. Thank you. All right, read. 37. Uh-huh. And herein is that saying true. 
One sower. One sower. And another reaper. Amen. Reap. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Mm -hmm. Other men labor, and ye are entered into their labors. All right, so he's talking about uh, the Jews. The foundation was laid by all the prophets. And now he's saying, now we build upon what they teach and what they have said. Um, and, and, and we, we uh, uh, reap from their labor. I read. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. All right. Which testified, he told me all that I ever did. All right. When they came, they believed uh, what she was saying. Read. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Now Jesus was contrary to what other uh, people of his stature would do, but he stayed with them. Read. And many were believed, and many more believed because of his own word. All right, so he kept on teaching, he kept on preaching. Read. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, no, not no. because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, now people can believe your testimony, but they've got to come to know him for themselves. Amen? And the only way to get to know him for themselves is to be exposed to the truth. That's what turned their, their hearts. Amen? Expose them to the truth. Ah, uh, there we go. Let them be changed and have their testimony. Amen? Uh, I wanted uh, uh, to serve the God that Brother David Riley served. Uh, and I believed in God. Uh, but now, that God has become my God. Uh, uh, does that sound like a story? Uh, Ruth and Naomi? Uh, uh, now I know it for myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. We thank God for the Bible study on tonight. Amen. Let us pray one for another. Uh, let's remember our saints meeting on Friday. Bible study is prayer at six and the saints meeting at seven. Amen. Let us come. Thank you. Um, we praise God. I praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, therefore, it's just like it's just like saying that uh, your old way is what, what the old way be was. See, and then now like, your new way is where it's going. Right. Right. It's going from the old to the new. That's what it's doing. Uh, you call me a be